a lot of times one really doesn't know where to begin when it comes to writing. There's so many ways that you get ideas and you don't even realize that you're doing it. They just sort of come in. But if you have a determined sort of approach, the next time you pick up a magazine or uh, perhaps you can visit uh, a lighting center in your area. One of the American Lighting Association members is particularly well trained to help you on these kinds of things. A way to approach lighting is to think of it in layers. You would want a layer of general light so that if you want to light the room in a almost sanitary, sterile kind of way, a utilitarian way, then you'll want the kind of light that can give you strong illumination, floors, walls, whatever is in the room that, that has a surface that needs to be lit for a purpose. If you want to use that room to evoke a feeling, warmth, hospitality, a place that would be a place to rest, then you may want lighting that is in spots and not general at all so that there's areas where it is not so light and then areas where the light will actually cause your eye to come and focus and notice that thing. There's so many effects that you can get when you're using lighting this way. Once you start to think about it as a tool, as a way to pull the eye or push the eye, create interest or to ignore something or look over it, that's when lighting is really starting to become a powerful thing in the hands of somebody who knows how to use it. Lighting can serve you uh, at every angle from top to bottom. Let's talk about top to bottom. We're all comfortable with lighting that comes from the top of the room. The advantage of a down can is that you can control the circle of light that it throws. You can make it really focus on something and then not touch something else that you don't want to focus on. Another way to bring an exciting different feeling to the lighting is to use something that they call rope lighting. And it can be used to put underneath the lips of counters. And it's amazing what it does. It allows the room to be gently lit, and yet you have this really sort of almost arty feeling when you have the lighting running under the ledge of the counter. You don't see the lighting, but you see its glow on the floor. Another way to sprinkle light through a room is to use smaller, smaller points of light like accent lamps. Floor lamps that are torchiers throw the lighting up to the ceiling so you get a great bounce and get a nice even spread. But you have the drama of the, of the light that's in the glass that's in the torchier. So it does a several, several multitask effect on that room. The chandeliers and all of the different types of lighting that you can buy that are installed either by you if you're handy or by your local ALA electrician, these are the things that actually are fun to buy and when the professionals there they'll show you how to use each one. There's lighting that has a metal shade that again makes the tabletop be the focus, not just a general glow of light around the room that dissipates. Or maybe you're going to step into the world of chandeliers. And that's now a crazy wonderful world. You can get contemporary, you can get way out, you can find things with amazing glass that goes in every direction, or you can go back into time and bring a little piece of Austrian history into your room. It's your choice. The choice is now endless. When you light a room, that's one thing. When you light things in the room, that's another. That's the point. Lighting says it better than almost anything. And you can put that lighting in a room that has furnishings that are sort of going to follow anything, and it makes those furnishings feel that way. It makes them take on that look, that glamour, that excitement. And it's one thing, and it's quick, and it's easy. Makeovers with light are things that are poorly understood, but they are some of the richest of all.